Well, guys, you're looking at some stuff that Pee Wee found in the trash, and I can't believe somebody threw this stuff away. We have a little, I think this is a master, I believe it's a 22, yeah, there we go. It's a little 22, and he found that with a key. These are just little warded locks, not a lot to them. You can easily bypass these. More interesting, at least to me, is, is this whole guy. I can't believe somebody threw away this really old Yale. Now, it doesn't have a key, but if you recall, we machined one of these open a while back. We know how they work, so now I've got just got to figure out how to impression this thing. These are very cool locks. I have a bunch of old reject keys that I can probably use as templates. So we'll be getting around to this guy. And then the last one, of course, is a replaceable core. Now, no keys for either of these two, obviously, but uh, this is a little model 8345 Abus, and it's got a wide open Schlage style keyway. So I figure if I'm gonna open anything, they are kind of nasty, but I'll just wash my hands like I've been doing a lot lately. Let's try this guy. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more deep, drawn out. So let's see what we got here. I'm going to use probably top of the keyway. Let me grab that one, see if the thick one will fit, and it should, yeah. All right, we'll try that. Ooh. Tell you what, since this has been in the trash, I'm going to give it a little... Just a little lube. Let me rake that in, too, just to get it. Make sure those pins are free. All right, that's a little better. It just seemed like when I put that tensioner in there, that core was it's still pretty stiff. So there's something grating around. Must have been in, maybe found it in sand or something, but definitely some crunching going on there. All right, uh, it is a wide open keyway. So I'm going to grab this guy, the 25 thousandths, and it is the forest half ball. And that would be the PN02 from Multipick. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to start off trying to bully it a little bit. I'm going to apply heavy tension, try to force something to bind, if I can find it. Okay, I got a click in the very back. It was either five or six, it's hard to tell. All right, I got one binder in the back. It feels like pin five. Got a click. Okay, now everything. I did not feel a turn, but now pretty much everything else is binding up. So what I'm going to do is uh, release the tension just a little bit. I only want one to bind. If I can control it like that. That was three. I think that's one. Okay, that was, I believe, six. Oh, I heard something fall. Okay, that was three again. That was two. Uh, hang on just a second here. We turn the heater off. The heater blows right towards the microphone, so a lot of you guys with bad ears probably heard that. There's pin one again, I think. There we go. Ah, I got a little bit of turn on the core. So we're on the right track here. Since we got turn on the core, I'm kind of looking now for counter rotation. It probably would indicate we're on a security pin of some kind. And there we go. This feels like pin four, counter rotation. Okay, click, but I lost the fault set. So let me go back up here to the front. I think it was pin one. Yeah, he's back down. So let me pick him again. There we go. We're back to that fault set. So he's kind of a gatekeeper. Okay, that was pin two. He just surprisingly just fell right into place. Again, with a fault set, I'm pushing really hard on these pins, looking for counter rotation. And there it is, pin two. So we got spools in this guy. Wow. You may hear a bunch of stuff drop here in a sec because he took a lot of pressure. And there we go, we got our fault set back. I touched three, got a further fault set, so we're on the right track. I believe that's pin five, counter rotation. 
and I lost the fault set. So we're starting to learn how this lock works. Let's go back up here to pin one. Yeah, he's back down. So now, now we again back to our fault set. Touched pin three and it rotated further. So feels like now pin three is giving me counter rotation. Okay, we clicked him and now let's go back to pin one to see if he's back down. Get on there. Nope. All right, so somebody else is now the gatekeeper. Pin two. Wow. I did not expect it to be this much of a challenge. Pin two again, deep fault set. I'm on pin four, counter rotation. Come on. And here we go, finally. All right. Ooh. All right. Um, looking down in here, looks like I can get in there with a Phillips. That ought to be about right. It's full of crud in there. Yeah, let me try something a little smaller than that one. Man, you can see this thing hadn't been opened for a while. Look at that shackle. Just nasty. All right. It's pretty clean so far. All right, let me go ahead and move all this stuff out of the way and get a penny tray. Let's take a look at what we got in here. Make sure that that does not lock up on us again. All right, easy, easy. Well, he says easy. Let me get a flat tip screwdriver. That way I don't jab a hole in my hand or another hole in my hand. Come on. Okay, I do have a tool here somewhere. Let's try that instead. If it's the right size. There we go. Come on. Okay, need a medium follower with a split. Okay, so this is one of those, again, Abus, we got to push this guy down to get him through there. This is a potential disaster. I've ruined more than one of these. So what I'm going to do is push this little detent down, he says. And that is not happening. All right. One other option. Maybe we can pull them out. This may be one of the cheap manufacturers. There we go. There it is. It was a press fit. All right. So let's again make sure we don't screw this up. At least now he doesn't pop up into one of these, or worse, pop up into the chamber, of the upper chamber, meaning you can't open the lock. You've just ruined it. So, again, let's get back to this. I'm making sure that this is going to line up about right. And that is the wrong side. Let's try this one. All right, it looks, somebody has, looks like somebody's repinned this guy. So these a lot of times do come zero-bitted with no, no keying, and they key it up at the locksmith. So if this was used for like in an industrial situation, they would have keyed a bunch of them up the same. So like a standard, standard, standard. Ah, we have a master wafer. So this was master keyed in some way. So definitely was for some kind of uh, organization. An individual would not ask for it to be. Okay, nothing in chamber six. He's empty. So I wonder why they... Oh, wait a minute. Sorry about that. No, he's the, he's the pin for upstairs. So there are no pins in number six. I wonder why they did that. That makes no sense at all. Why go to all this trouble if you're not going to take full advantage of the security, right? All right, let's see what's upstairs. There better be some spool. And we got a standard. Chamber two, we got a spool. Chamber three, we got a spool. Number four, spool. Five, spool. 
and probably, hopefully, nothing in six. Yeah, we got an empty chamber. That makes no sense whatsoever. All the springs are the same. They barely come up to the shear line there. So this was clearly put together by a locksmith for some kind of organization. Uh, it was master keyed uh, for at least one master key, perhaps as many as two, and um, all spools. So he did it right. I got to give whoever the locksmith was credit. So there you go, the Abus. Let's see what we got here. The Abus 8345 from Pee Wee, a trash find. Thanks, Pee Wee. Pee Wee, appreciate it. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal.